The story of our planet is the story of energy and growth. As we seek to balance human needs with the protection of the planet, a powerful new energy option is rising before us. This energy is green, like the forests it protects. Golden, like the sun reflecting off the pipes that convey it. And white, pure white. But this is geothermal energy, coming from the steam and hot water that have risen naturally from deep within the earth since time immemorial. One of the planet's oldest forms of energy but also, paradoxically, its newest. Geothermal, a renewable energy that is transforming the relationship between economic growth, ecological conservation, and human well-being around the world, especially in the 40,000 kilometer long volcanic region bordering the Pacific Ocean, known as the Ring of Fire. In a dense tropical forest in Indonesia, Danny makes his way purposefully between the thick foliage. With the skill and speed of an athlete, he climbs an Aranga palm tree, the source of his livelihood. Making an incision in the tree, he lets the sap ooze out carefully in a way that actually prolongs the tree's life. Here in Indonesia's North Sulawesi province, the local people have been making sugar in their homes from the sap of the Aranga palm for centuries. Today, the Masarang Palm Sugar Factory helps them create a quality product for the international market that gives them good incomes and improves the quality of their lives. The forest and its surroundings are home to these people and a wealth of wildlife. But also an unlikely neighbor, the 80 megawatt Lahangdong power plant run by Pertamina, Indonesia's state-run energy company. A vital factor in the growth of the wider Indonesian economy, it is also intimately connected to the well-being and livelihood of the local people. The unique success of the local agro-based palm sugar production, and strange as it may sound, the ecology of the forest itself. The clouds that billow from this plant aren't smoky. They're a clear, steamy white. In a greenhouse in Kenya, a keo packs large numbers of roses every day. Cut flowers from Kenya are among the most sought after in world markets. And the Osarian flower farm, where Akeo works, is one of the largest producers, providing gainful employment and good living conditions to thousands of people from local communities. Located by the clear waters of Lake Naivasha, it is also next door to a national park. The other local resident is the Olkaria power plant of the Kenya Electricity Generating Company, or Kengen, the equivalent of Indonesia's Pertamina. Kengen's Olkaria facilities generate some 150 megawatts that feed into the national grid. Here too the air is clear, the surroundings quiet, and the only thing that rises up into the Kenyan sky is once again white pups of cloud. This is steam from geothermal energy. Geothermal energy, a renewable, 
that is redefining renewables by reshaping the relationship between economic growth, ecological conservation and human well-being. Geothermal energy is simply the heat from the earth. The core of our planet is made of extremely hot iron, surrounded by molten rock or magma. At places the magma finds its way to the surface as a volcano. More often, it heats underground water to form hot springs, geysers or fountains of steam. This natural process can be mimicked by technology. At many places on the earth, you can drill narrow wells to extract hot water or steam from the underground. This can be used to provide heating as well as to turn turbines and generate electricity without burning fossil fuels and releasing harmful greenhouse gases. and the condensed steam is returned to the earth to replenish the supply. While other green options like solar or wind are useful, they have certain limitations. Geothermal, however, is continuous, reliable and powerful. Like oil, gas or coal, geothermal can meet the base load needs of even big cities and heavy industries. In countries where we have the resources for geothermal, it will be a very, very important, it can be a very important part of the total renewable energy mix. This combination of heat, power and baseload generation makes geothermal really very important for the future. And if we really, if we really develop technology so far that enhanced geothermal systems become marketable, then it will change everything in a dramatic way, but in a positive way, in a number of countries. Indonesia is an integral part of the Ring of Fire. As a country with 40% of the world's geothermal resources, Indonesia has always been aware of the potential of this energy source but large oil reserves had earlier obscured its importance. In the changed energy environment, geothermal has been growing in importance. Kamojang, in the West Java province. The first geothermal wells in Indonesia were drilled here by the then Dutch government in 1926. Nearly a century later, one of these is still blowing hot. But over these years, Pertamina Geothermal Energy, a subsidiary of the country's energy major, has developed the Kamojang field more extensively. The four installations here generate a total of 200 megawatts, and this densely wooded area has remained protected even as energy development here accelerates. Development banks of the Netherlands are playing an important role in partnering Indonesia's transition to this renewable energy. What we are doing in Indonesia is it's, it's, it's a given that price of uh, conventional energy sources, oil and gas and coal, prices will rise. So, which will uh, by the end of the day mean that alternative sources of energy will get cheaper relatively. Uh, compared with, with these traditional sources of, uh, of energy. So it's a question of time and uh, uh, the price for a geothermal uh, generated megawatt is the same as for a coal generated megawatt. And uh, if you even look further into the future, uh, coal will get more expensive uh, in time. And while we think that geothermal uh, has still enough potential to be exploded, uh, uh, that, that geothermal cost will stay rather flat for the, for the coming years. In West Java, Chevron, the world's largest geothermal producer, runs an eco-friendly plant alongside the Chevron Salak National Park, home to several rare and endangered species. The Chevron Geothermal Salak Power Plant 
has a vested interest in the conservation of the tropical rainforest. After all, it is the rainforest that maintains the local microclimate and ensures the rainfall that provides water for the plant's energy production needs. This is true of geothermal plants everywhere, and it's a reversal of the usual conflict of environment versus energy. The forests have to flourish for the power to flow and the economy to grow. On the one hand, geothermal is one of the cleanest alternative energy that we would like to be explored uh, by the country. But on the other hand, we would like to draw particular attention, especially in Indonesia, uh, many of the uh, geothermal potentials are overlapped with testing forests in the country. And that's the uh, major concerns of the WEF as a conservation NGO, that we would like uh, two ways. One is we still like to see geothermal becomes one of the primary sources of energy, clean energy, I would say. And secondly, uh, we would like to promote the sustainable operations in terms of protecting biodiversity in the area where land clearance and, uh, and technical operations are required for geothermal uh, exploration. Technology plays a vital role in extending the utility of this eco-friendly energy option. The Netherlands, with its expertise in cutting-edge geothermal technologies, is also trying to use these to assist in enhancing Indonesia's geothermal resource base. If Indonesia, which now has a resource of 28 gigawatt, um, would also look in the possibility of getting what is called engineered geothermal, where we look for the hot rocks and we bring the water in from, from above and through a heat exchanger then get it up. In the US, that would, you would have to go 10 kilometers. In Indonesia, you get the same results and the same temperatures already with a much smaller uh, capital cost uh, at four kilometers high. So if we can inc include that in the development of Indonesia, we can produce electricity even by the year 2050 for 12 to 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Another example of the coexistence of energy development and environment is Pertamina's Langdong power plant, located near the forest where Danny taps his Arenga sugar palm trees. Like other geothermal power companies, it occupies a small area of land, doesn't upset the local ecology, and instead devotes much of its energies to tree plantation and forest maintenance. The waste steam from this plant is in fact what powers the Masaranga palm sugar factory, where Danny brings his palm sap for processing. With the assurance of steam power, tappers like Danny, who were earlier compelled to cut trees on a large scale for fuel wood to make the sugar, now earn a better livelihood while protecting the local ecology. On the hilly slopes of Wang Windu in West Java, women harvest tea, a delicate crop that requires a clean and pure environment. While steam from another of Indonesia's major geothermal plants rises in the distance. Wayang Windu, which produces 227 megawatts, is considered to be among the most efficient plants of its kind in the world. A private sector initiative owned by Star Energy and Indonesian Group, it is surrounded by tea plantations and villages. With all these initiatives across the country, Indonesia has come a long way from its geothermal beginnings. Today, it's the world's third largest geothermal electricity producer, and it's aiming still higher. In the programs for the next coming years, at, on 2014, uh, should be, be, be the government of Indonesia have a plan to develop up to uh, at least 3,000 megawatts uh, electricity from the geothermal activity. And after that, uh, on the years 2025, the government have the programs to develop up to 12,000 megawatts electricity from the geothermal as a renewable energy. So hopefully the 
geothermal energy can be fulfill the lack of the energy in Indonesia, especially for the electricity. The success of these ideas will call for some changes in the policies that govern geothermal energy development around the world. In Indonesia, for example, it will have to be freed of the regulations that have inappropriately equated it with mining activities. Human resource development is equally vital and at the Institute Technology Bandung, Neni Saptadi, a pioneer in the field, has already helped create Indonesia's first master's program in geothermal energy. Human resources development is our main program because it covers uh, uh, actually education uh, uh, through academic program or also, and also trainings. So we here also provide, uh, uh, apart from uh, academic program, we also provide trainings for uh, accelerating the geothermal development in Indonesia. Steam billows out of a mountain in the Philippines. This large group of islands is a stunning example of the power of geothermal energy through an aggressive program for developing this renewable resource. As the world's second largest developer of geothermal, the Philippines generates some 2,000 megawatts, meeting 17% of its total energy needs. One of the greatest gains from this is the increase in energy self-sufficiency. Geothermal provides an indigenous base load. So it's important. But it's a base load that's not dependent on uh, fossil fuel. It does not generate greenhouse gas. It's indigenous and therefore it'll always be there. Costs will be relatively stable, as opposed, let's say, to fossil fuels, where the delivery of fossil fuels involves burning more fuel, and it'll involve uh, sailing through rougher seas, uh, more um, variable climate, thereby increasing the cost of fossil fuels. An indigenous baseload gives you access to an opportunity to decouple economic development from the cost of fossil fuel. Geothermal makes sense for us because we have it here in the Philippines and in Indonesia. Much of this rapid development is a result of the trailblazing efforts of the Energy Development Corporation, a world leader in the field. EDC has been running plants, such as the one seen here, with great success since they started. Now, under the Ring of Fire program and a newfound partnership with WWF, they seek to promote large-scale geothermal expansion throughout the world, starting with the Philippines and Indonesia. In all this, they are following a set of sustainability standards that will ensure the success of geothermal energy from an environmental, social and economic perspective. Through the Ring of Fire program, we will work with geothermal companies, government regulators and local stakeholders uh, in its development and implementation, eventually positioning the sustainability standards as, as, as an industry-wide benchmark that will establish geothermal energy as, sust as a sustainable energy source, build broad stakeholder support, and eventually pave the way for its large-scale expansion. The landscapes of the great East African Rift Valley are a riot of colors, where life has evolved around the gradually splitting Earth's crust. Geothermal power contributes 13% of Kenya's total energy production, making it one of the countries with the highest amount of geothermal electricity generation. In the next 15 years, we are planning that we'll be having 49% of this being geothermal, of the total generation for Kenjin to be geothermal. Geothermal is a clean energy and it is renewable. All the water we get from the ground, we return into the ground. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
and yet its impact on the and yet its impact on the local area is small enough for it to be located quite uniquely inside a nature reserve the hell's gate national park Before building it, a team of scientists made a careful study of wildlife behavior in the area. By rooting the pipes to stay clear of animal corridors at most places and bending them to allow passage at others, the plant's designers have been able to draw power from the forest without disturbing its inhabitants. The Great Rift Valley of Kenya is home to a vast array of animals and plant species and success here is a green signal for further growth. We believe and that's why we work on, on, on sustainability criteria that geothermal in principle can be in full harmony with nature, in full harmony with pristine forest. The, the amount of land a geothermal power plant would need and the water pipelines with the hot water coming up and the and the, and the cold water, the cool water going down again, the amount of land needed is minor, is minor, um, compared to what would be needed, for instance, for open cast mining for coal. Besides providing 95% of the electricity, the steam from Osarian's captive wells also heats 50 acres of roses in greenhouses, controlling the nighttime humidity, which would otherwise cause fungus to form on the plants. By heating the greenhouses at night time, we're able to control the relative humidity in the greenhouse. Because without heat, at this altitude, um, especially on very clear nights uh, in January, February, March, temperatures drop to below 10 degrees at night time, quite often less than 5 or 6. And as a result of that, the plants get cold during the night. Um, then when the warm sun comes up in the morning and the air settles on the plants, you get condensation on the plants. That condensation obviously makes the plants wet and the wetness creates fungal diseases. We don't spray any fungicide because we limit the uh, relative humidity in the greenhouse to below 85%, which means in the morning we don't get any wetness on the leaves and therefore no need to spray any fungicides. So we get a direct benefit in that we don't have to incur the cost of fungicides and we get a buy benefit in that the quality is obviously improved and therefore also productivity is improved. Hot water from the wells sterilizes the water emerging from the hydroponic farming processes, recycling it for reuse. Spread over 245 acres of land, Osarian is one of Kenya's largest and most advanced floriculture businesses. Every day, one million stems from this farm go to premier markets around the world earning Kenya some $250 million every year. A study found that despite the fuel used for freight while transporting the flowers to markets in Europe, their carbon footprint is just one-sixth that of local European growers. Many of Kenyan flowers come here, to the Netherlands, the country with the world's largest auction of cut flowers and plants. Some 21 million flowers and 2 million plants are sold daily here in what looks like an odd mix between a flower market and a stock exchange.
As you pass through the countryside, you'll see row after row of huge greenhouses, where climate control allows the growth of an amazing range of crops. Farming is big business in the Netherlands, accounting for around 10% of the country's GDP and 10% of its employment as well. Geothermal is emerging as an important contributor to this. In the Netherlands, we have uh, good data on the, on, in the underground. Every well that has been drilled, we have data. Um, so we have learned to model um, geothermal, use of geothermal, um, even that we have to drill the same depths as in Indonesia, but we only get about 90 degrees Celsius. Still, with that temperature, we are able to heat our greenhouses, uh, we are able to replace uh, natural gas for district heating. Um, now, with that knowledge, we can uh, develop high enthalpy fields. Ted Diverstein's greenhouse, which runs on geothermal, spreads over no less than 13 hectares. Here he produces tomatoes for export to Sweden, Spain and the UK, as well as for sale in the Netherlands itself. Dutch greenhouse farming has traditionally used natural gas for its energy needs. But Ted's success shows why geothermal is food for thought. Vooruitzien, uh, ja, dan moet je natuurlijk wel mee bezig zijn uh, met nu. Want elk idee wat je nu uh, opborrelt, dat heb je gewoon een periode van vijf jaar nodig voor, uh, om dingen uit te werken. Dus je moet eigenlijk al een uh, glazen bol kijken. Van hoe ziet de situatie over vijf jaar eruit? En wat is nodig? En dan moet je vandaag mee bezig zijn. Hoe ziet de situatie over 15 jaar uit? En dan moet je al een aanzet in geven. En uh, nou, dat is het ook heel belangrijk, wat voor stap je onder gaat ondernemen. En dat moet eigenlijk veel meer bedrijven doen, ook de overheid. En ik vind ook dat de overheid daar uh, strategisch uh, veel belangrijke beslissingen in moet nemen. Van, ja, hoe ga je de energievoorziening regelen? Hoe ga je het, uh, ja, de, de omgeving regelen? Ja, en dat zijn de belangrijkste items, niet voor uh, wat gebeurt er morgen. Ted isn't the only one with a growing interest in the heat from the earth. In 2011, Turn, Wallstar and three other farmers from Westlands showed just how green thumbs could benefit from green energy. They have invested a million euros to install this geothermal plant in their neighborhood that will give them an edge over others in their farming operations. Turn grows exotic tropical plants in his greenhouse, which otherwise only grow in the rainforests of Brazil. With each of the plants grown here, selling for between 30 and 40 euros, it's a big financial harvest. A bit of a moment of... Then he took it two years ago, and then he took it to the five participants, I'll even call it. Jos Scheffers, Zwingro, is there. Uh, Kwekerij Mulder, Gert Jan Verkalen en mijn persoon dan. Dus we zijn met vijf personen. Totaal hebben wij dan 25 hectare qua kassen om mee te verwarmen. Ja, insteek is gewoon je, je kosten te verlagen. Die 15% koststijging wat we de laatste vijf jaar meemaken, daar worden wij niet vrolijk van. Dat krijg je niet uit je product terug. Want die zit gewoon gelijk die prijs. Dus we willen gewoon reduceren in de kosten. Dus we wachten nu toch een kostenbesparing. Vanaf de, de gaspijs gezien van wat die nu is, of, uh, rond de 20 percent. The Netherlands gets its energy from natural gas, imported oil and coal, and some amount of wind, solar and nuclear. As demand rises and fossil fuel prices go up, these may still keep the home fires burning, but they will burn a hole in Dutch pockets as well. About 8 percent of the total gas consumption in the Netherlands goes to greenhouses. So it is a huge amount of gas that is used in the greenhouses. Um, and 
they have to bring this cost down because it is taking 20, 30 percent of the total cost is coming out of uh, paying for fossil fuels. And the, the prices fluctuate tremendously. Um, and they cannot predict, they cannot make a business with these varying prices. Um, so geothermal energy is by far the best way for them to uh, come, come away from fossil fuels. Um, it, is, it, is, uh, it is affordable. Um, so yes, it is, it is by far the most important uh, thing for them that is going to happen in the, in the next, uh, next years. Um, and, and in the end, it, it, uh, all of the greenhouses could be heated, let's say, for at least 50% by, uh, by geothermal. All over Asia and Africa, the growing might of a new world economy is asserting itself. Today, the planet must sustain not just the developed economies of the West, but the rising powers of the East as well. We may not be able to avoid fossil fuels entirely because they're already linked to growth commitments in so many ways. And growth itself is linked to human aspirations that cannot be denied. In the real world, we need real solutions. Well, let's be honest, the age of fossil fuels is far from over. That's, that's one thing. And what we can see, that there will be an, an enormous growth in energy demand, and then we are talking about one-third more than now. But that's exactly what is the window of opportunity for renewables, because next to fossil fuels, we'll have to see to it that we make more use of, use of renewables, that there's more energy efficiency. And that's, of course, in, all this, uh, in the whole of this picture where geothermal comes in as well. Each day renews the energy and hopes of more than 7 billion people on a fragile planet. It lights the way for Danny as he sets off in search of sweet success in the heart of the forest. Beams down on Akeo, tending to the roses that allow her family's aspirations to blossom forth. Shines on the ripe red fruit of Ted's labor for a secure future. They walk with us to the crossroads of human civilization, where every step we take defines our destiny. Never has there been a greater need for a cheap, reliable, powerful, and safe source of energy. A source that doesn't require the absurd paradox of choosing between human beings and the planet we live on. This is what geothermal energy offers us. From the wellsprings of the earth, a fountain of energy waits for us to walk towards it, to fulfill the hopes of billions of a growing planet and secure the future of life itself.